Hey guys, in this set of notes, we're going to talk about wave interactions. Now this is going to include not only how waves interact with their surroundings, but also how waves interact with each other. So the first thing we have to look at is the idea that the wave's medium determines how fast the wave travels. That means that when a wave changes medium, the wave's properties are affected. Now medium is just a really fancy word for substance or stuff that it travels through. So the medium is like air, or water, or a slinky. And if we change the medium, going from air into water, or water into air, that will affect the wave's properties. So think about the game where you go underwater in a pool, and you say a phrase, and your friend has to guess what the phrase that you're saying. Since the motion of your vocal cords is affecting water and not air particles, it gets distorted and it actually has different characteristics and different properties. That's why it sounds so funny when you start speaking underwater. So the thing that you have to write down that you have to make sure that you remember, so star it, if the medium does not change, wave speed is constant. That's going to come into play later when we start doing calculations. If it's traveling through air, the temperature of the air matters, but as long as you're in the same room, it's not going to necessarily affect the wave or the motion of the particles. So waves interact with both their surroundings as well as each other. We're going to be looking at both of these experiences in the next few units. First, we're going to focus on how waves interact with their surroundings. So the first interaction is reflection. When a wave hits a barrier, it will bounce off of it. And the easiest example of this is a mirror. You see your image in a reflection in the mirror because the light waves hit the mirror and bounce backwards. That's why if you move yourself to the left of the mirror, you can see more items on the right of the mirror. So if you are here, you're going to see things over here in the room next to you because of that reflection aspect of the light waves. So these angles, this instant angle and this reflective angle, are always going to be the same number because mathematically they have to be equal. So if this is a 15 degree angle, this is also a 15 degree angle. So reflection is the first one. The wave bounces off. The next one is refraction. And it sounds really similar, but it's not. In refraction, a wave changes medium. So that means that it's going through one object and then it enters a second object. And it actually changes the speed and possibly the direction of the wave. So in this photograph, the light ray is coming in this direction. It's hitting this prism or this block and bending because it's slowing down. And when it hits the outside boundary, it continues going the same speed as originally. Because in air, the speed on this side has to be the same as the speed on this side. So refraction is the change in speed of a wave when it crosses between two different media. Media is just the plural for medium. And there are a couple of examples of this. The first one is a pencil and a cup of water. And if you've ever seen this trick, it looks like the pencil's broken at the top of the water because the light traveling through the water is slower than the light traveling through the air, so it creates that optical illusion. A second example is if you ever try to catch minnows in a shallow part of a pond or a lake. When you reach your hand or your net into the water, you visually see the minnows in one location, but they really are in a separate location because of that bending of the light. So you have to overcorrect in order to try to guess where they're going to be located. So refraction is the bending of light or the bending of waves as it changes the medium in which it travels. The last one is diffraction. Diffraction is when the wave changes direction because there is an object in the way. So in this picture, we have a boundary shown by the yellow lines. These are light waves traveling towards that boundary with a little slit in the middle. 
And what happens is as the light rays travel through, if they're going directly through the center, they're going to continue traveling directly in the same direction. If they hit this edge boundary, they actually bend a little bit and travel a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Diffraction causes those waves to slow down. So in this photo, you see that these crests right straight through that entrance or that opening are still pretty vivid. They may not be as bright or as distinct as before the opening occurred, but they're still very easy to see. As we travel over here, where the waves slowed, they're less vivid and less distinct because the waves actually did slow down. So examples of this are things such as the light going out of a doorway. If your door is here in the wall, it'll be dim over here, but you will still see some light, okay? Or even sound traveling down a hall. If I'm in my classroom giving a presentation, you may hear me three rooms down because the sound is still traveling through the air molecules, but they may not be quite as loud simply because it's turning and moving around barriers or corners. In a real life example of this, if you've ever been on the lake, are breaker walls. And breaker walls are large rock formations that are put in front of marinas so waves from the lake don't cause damage within the marina. So if this is the marina entrance here and this is the land on either side in your entrance to the marina, there's going to be breaker walls built up out here so when the waves come they either reflect off the breaker wall or they slow down as they travel around the breaker wall. So we have three interactions with surroundings. Reflection, which is bouncing. Refraction, which is bending. Or diffraction, which is slowing down. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is superposition. This is what happens when two waves meet in the same medium. There are some common misconceptions though. Whenever we do this in class, a lot of people think that the waves bounce off of each other. So if one wave is traveling from the left to the right and the one's traveling from the right to the left, when they hit in the center they're going to go backwards towards the direction that they came from. Another misconception is that they continue moving in the same direction but ignore each other completely. And the last misconception is that the larger wave overtakes the smaller wave. And what that means is that essentially the larger wave just bullies the lower wave or the smaller wave around and it's like the smaller wave was never there. So these are common thoughts of what happens, but they're actually all incorrect. So what we're going to talk about is the principle of superposition. This is the displacement of a medium caused by two or more waves being the algebraic sum of the displacement caused by the individual waves. So, real people words. When two waves interact, you're either going to add or subtract their crests and troughs in order to create a new wave. This is called interference, and there are two types of interference. The first type is constructive interference, and that's when you have the displacements happening in the same direction. So on this diagram, we have a crest lining up with a crest. So you actually add those heights together and you get a larger crest. You have a trough lining up with a trough. You add those together and you get a larger trough. So constructive interference is creating bigger waves. Destructive interference is when they do not line up. So in this picture, we have a crest and a trough happening at the same time. And since they have the same amplitude, that means that it's like the wave just isn't even happening. So then we have a trough and a crest, again, the same amplitude, but opposite sides. And when you put those together, you are actually subtracting, and it's going to be an amplitude of zero. 
So constructive, the superposition makes a bigger wave. Destructive, the superposition makes a smaller wave. So we're going to draw the results of two waves and then we're going to be done with a set of notes. So notice, these waves, this one's traveling from the left to the right, and this is traveling from the right to the left. Amplitude of 1, 2, and 1, 2. So when these meet in the middle, our wave is going to actually be nothing. It's just going to be a straight line. Once they meet in the middle, though, you will have the one on the top still moving in the same direction and the one on the bottom still moving in the same direction. So now we have two crests on the same side of the wave. And when they meet, since their amplitudes are 1, 2, 1, 2 each, it's like we're going to have an amplitude of 4. And once those meet, we're going to have this crest still traveling in that direction and this crest still traveling in this direction. So essentially the waves go through each other, they either add up or they subtract, and then they continue on in the same direction that they were moving. So in class we're going to practice this superposition of waves and we're going to do a couple worksheets and a couple of ideas together. So I'll see you tomorrow so we can work on this.